Hey y'all. Okay, so it's Wednesday. It's only Wednesday, but it's Wednesday night ish. So it's halfway over. <laughs> okay, so um, what are we talking about tonight? Well, okay, so there's been a lot of stuff going around lately. I'm sure y'all have seen it. Um, lots of, lots of parenting stuff lately about, um, like how you're not your kid's friend and, you know, basically people seeming to really just go out of their way to have their kids be like super pissed off at them. And, um, you know, I mean, okay, I say it all the time, like, I have four kids, someone's always mad at me. And that's because there's six people in my house, so sometimes someone's just not going to get to do what they want. Okay, that's just a fact of life. Alright. But, you're, you know, you're... It's not a sign of good parenting if your kids are always, like, pissed off at you. You don't have to be a dick to your kids, you know. They always say kindness starts at home. You shouldn't be nicer to random strangers than you are to your kids or to the people that live with you. And uh, you should just be nice to everyone because it takes... Uh, at the very least, don't make their day any harder. Don't make their life any harder. Be nice. And that starts, you know... Be nice to your kids. And now, I will say, you know, before I had kids, I was a great parent. <laughs> I was a perfect parent before I had kids. And I was really smug with the oldest one because she was really um, good. She was a good toddler. You know, she really didn't do anything that I can complain about and you know she went to daycare while I went to school and she was good at daycare and she was good for her sitters and no one ever had any complaints about her um and so I was just like clearly these people have no you know kids kids that are bad you know their parents must be doing something wrong they're raising little spoiled assholes um and then I had my second kid and uh oh boy did uh autism taught me <laughs> and I started to really at that point because I was like oh fuck, what did I do wrong and so I really started to to dig in about and at this point I was taking you know like child development classes psychology classes and I really started to read um, a lot and I found some really invaluable resources. I'll share the links below um, because they are really helpful. I recommend these to every parent that messages me asking what the hell they can do for their child, especially, um, let's see, big ages I get it for, like three, um, like six and, you know, nine roundabout. Those are the big ones um, where people say that they're having trouble, but especially three is the worst, especially, uh, usually with your first kid, because <laughs> they've never dealt with that before, you know. My fourth is two and a half now, and she's coming up on that. I'm just like, so, you know, lots more snacks, and it's fine, it passes, it's, you know, um, whatever cartoon they like, and whatever popsicle, or whatever, you know, put that out there, and it passes. <laughs> But, um, when you understand age-appropriate behavior and you have age-appropriate expectations of your children, it really does change the game. Um, like I was at the store the other day and I heard a parent, uh, kept yelling at their child, sit, sit, sit. <laughs> It sounds like when you're yelling at your dog. And then this parent proceeds to, you know, 
beat their kid <laughs> because and and the 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 line that they used was well I've asked you several times nicely to sit and so this is what you get dude no you never asked nicely you never said hey could you please sit on your bottom hey you know but on the seat hey let's you know let's be careful you, you know you didn't explain it you just you yelled at them like they were a dog and then when they didn't listen because they're gonna tune you out because it's irritating and then you beat this shit out of them like what the what's your problem you know and and I and and I know people are gonna well I got beat when I was a kid and I turned out just fine and you know my parents spanked me and I turned out just fine if you think it's okay to hit another person who is smaller and weaker than you when they don't do what you tell them to then you didn't turn out okay that's just the end of it you didn't turn out okay um because a lot of the arguments that people use in favor of you know hitting their kids are arguments that used to be used um and are still used in some countries where it's legal to beat your wife <laughs> And it wasn't that long ago in this country that people could legally beat their wives. It wasn't an issue. Um, it was just the done thing. It's still the done thing in a lot of countries, so don't bring that here. Um, also, I see a lot of parents acting like... How do I explain this? Um, that their kids aren't really I don't want to say members of the family they are members of the family but the way they treat their kids in relation to living in the house it's more like they're a tenant whose goods are all on loan versus a member of the family whose belongings are their own um and I'll see this a lot, especially with, like, you know, there was a video going around about a woman who bagged up all her kids' stuff, just went in the room, garbage bags, bagged it all up, and said the kids could buy it back from her for a certain price per bag, but not for money they already had saved to teach them responsibility and, you know, whatever. Um, that's not how you teach your kids responsibility. You know, if their rooms a mess and I hear that so it, it, people gripe about the kids messy rooms you know this th these kids don't appreciate anything they don't respect their belongings they don't take care of stuff okay well all right you know Becky take that back you know <laughs> like for forever and it, it, someone's always had a complaint about kids these days kids these days they're fucking kids like take take a little bit of time to sit back and realize why they act the way they do and change your approach just a little bit. Do I have perfect kids? No, am I a perfect mom? Heck no. I have four kids. They ought to be parented differently. And it is a total roller coaster. It's not this linear, you know. Before I had kids, I thought, okay, pregnant, have a baby, up through about preschool, and then skip to like when they're graduating med school. Nice linear. No, it's, it's fucking crazy. Every kid's going to need to be parented differently. And so some days that works great. And some days it uh, I fall flat on my face trying to do it. Um, but they're people. They're not a part of you. They're not an extension of you. They're not going to think like you. or they're, they're people. And they deserve to be treated like people. Um, so... If you want to teach them responsibility, I mean, first off, if their room's messy, shut the door. Do I have rules about, you know, messy rooms? Y yeah. Um, you know, Legos have to be picked up because that shit hurts. And, you know, no food or drinks because that attracts bugs. And, like, no wet towels because mold is disgusting. Um, you know, outside of that, I try to be pretty uh, lenient about it because first off if you go in there and bag up all their stuff it's not gonna work they're just gonna resent the crap out of you um, 
Second off, you took their stuff. Like, would you dig if your mother-in-law... Let's use that example. If your mother-in-law came over and decided you weren't keeping, you know, her adult child's house neat enough and she bagged up your shit. It's not cool. Um, you know, natural consequences work really well. Uh, you know, especially once they get old enough to have friends start coming over they're probably going to want to clean that room because they're going to get embarrassed. Um, also, here's a really easy one. Don't repair or replace anything that they lose or break. Um, especially, you know, if they break their, if they bust their tablet because it was laying on the floor under a pile of shit and they step on it and crack the screen and now it doesn't work. Too bad. Earn some money and buy a new one. Um, you know, if they lose part of their uniform for extracurricular activities, that's not your problem. They can earn some money or sell something to pay for it. Uh, or they can do, usually they'll have where you can do, you know, detention and stuff like that uh, to make up for it. So they're going to learn. <laughs> Trust me, there are plenty of opportunities for life to kick your kids in the ass. And the older they get, the more frequent and more, you know, devastating those kicks in the ass can be. Because they can really knock your kids down. Um, life's going to do that to them. A lot, alright? You know? Um, and the, the world, I try to tell my kids, the world doesn't care about you unfortunately at home we do and we love you and you're very important here and you're very valued that's not always going to be the case out in the world so maybe the focus shouldn't be on priding ourselves on the fact that we're not friends with our kids and we showed them who's boss um you know because we've got a world full of people raised like that so maybe we turn it around and we meet our kids halfway and realize they are just kids, learn why they are acting the way they are, and try to meet them where they're at. You can't expect a two-year-old to act like an eight-year-old. You can't expect an eight-year-old to act like a 16-year-old. You can't expect a 16-year-old to act like a 25-year-old. You can't, you know, so cut out a lot of the inappropriate expectations. Cut out the, you know, commanding them like animals and carrying around, you know, belts and wooden spoons to threaten them to get into line and, you know, just just think about it for a minute. If it's something that wouldn't be acceptable for you to do, just a quick visual, you know, or whatever here. If if you couldn't do it to your to your spouse or to your best friend, don't do it to your kids. All right. If and that's just a really easy litmus test there. If you couldn't do it to your spouse or your partner or your best friend, don't fucking do it to your kids. Um because to see kids treated more like just I, I don't even know what what is this even where it's we're <laughs> proud and braggy of like putting kids in their place and I, what is what what are we treating them like what are we treating kids like when it's you know okay you have a room in my house but it's not your room I mean you live there but it's not your room it's my room and you have this stuff, but it's not your stuff, it's my stuff. I'm like, what even is that? So, um, you know, yeah, kids aren't stupid, y'all. They know that, like, you're not their buddy up the road they go ride bikes with. I mean, you should, you know, if you can, go ride bikes with your kids. It's nice. Um... You have a vested interest in your children that no one else is going to ever have. You're going to love your kids in a way that no one else is ever going to. They know you're not just their buddy. 
but it doesn't hurt to 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 be kind to them. You know, I I don't I don't think real friendship comes with your kids until they're older. Um and there's a lot less trying to constantly reinforce good behavior, break bad habits. You know, when they're very needy, there's such an imbalance there. When they're younger, where, you know, I wouldn't want a friend like that as an adult that was just constantly needy and selfish and never thought more than, you know, five minutes ahead, which is, you know, how kids are. There's, and there's a huge imbalance of, of power there as well. <clears throat> but the goal is to nurture a relationship with them now. What I want for my kids, what I want for me and my kids, is to nurture a relationship now. So that when they are adults, they do want to come back home. They want to come home and bring their partners and, you know, if I'm lucky, grandkids. And, you know, I want all that. And I want them to, to, to be happy to do it, to, to want to come see me and be willing to come see me and not just this begrudging, like, once a year on Thanksgiving or some shit. I want them to want to, to come home. So maybe just, you know, <laughs> think about it. I mean, you know, and, and I know so much of parenting is reactionary you have to do something and so if you yell or you spank or you get on Facebook and talk about how you took all their shit away and they're gonna learn and then it shows people people you can say well I did I did my best I did something and that's what people people want to see you know you feel like you have to do something and it's a lot hard especially in public when your kids are throwing a fucking tantrum and you just want to like you know people are staring at you and to those people fuck off mind your own um unless you're gonna help offer and that's you see someone with kids throwing a tantrum maybe offer to help take their bags to the car give them a gift card for a cup of coffee something useful you know if you have some like stickers in your bag or something offer the kid a sticker who knows you know tell the mom she's doing a good job or the dad or whoever because that shit's hard. Um, but you're not parenting them and you don't need to parent for them. Do it for your kid. It sucks. It's hard. Sometimes you just got to ditch a buggy and go home. Sometimes you, you know, you came out at the wrong time of day. Kids are tired. They want a snack. Go get them a damn ice cream. You know, shit makes me feel better. <laughs> You know, they are they. You know, it's not. It's not hard, but you you have to you have to get out of that. You know, and it's like I say, it, it's not hard, but it is frustrating because that's that's the go to. Is you know people spank and yell because that's what happened to them and that's what you have to do. But so much of what you're trying to spank and yell out of your kids is stuff they're going to outgrow anyway. And not any quicker if you spank and yell and, you know, whatever. So instead of, you know, reacting and thinking that we all came out of this okay, like, just take a little bit of time, figure out why they act the way they do. And then, you know, maybe try to parent the way you know you either you wish you were parented or think about the end result you want from your parenting um and and start there and i will share you know some resources that have been invaluable to me um and you know sometimes it really helps if you just you know stick yourself in a timeout put the kids to bed early and you know sit down with like a beer and turn on some Futurama and just like you know kids kids are rough it's hard it's hard and you don't really know if you've done a good job or not until they're older and it'll uh it'll wear you out trying to figure out if you got it right or not 
and so some days the the best you can do is just keep them alive and fed and <laughs> you know, go from there but it's it is hard but it is amazing and you know you you guys we can do better and so just takes a little bit more time and a little bit more patience and like I say sometimes you know beer and Futurama so <sighs> all right that's my that's enough complaining for this evening I'm about to have some water burger and it's gonna be awesome and you know <laughs> yeah and some beer and Futurama because it's been a long day so <laughs> But it's Wednesday night, so you guys, we're almost to the weekend. And, yeah. So, you guys, I will um, share all the information down below. And uh, let me know what you think. And uh, I'll be back really soon with another video. Bye, y'all.